My tail tingles every time I get near him. Oh, so we're supposed to go hungry because your butt's vibrating. I'm starting to think that little tingle of yours is just you being gay. Follow me into the great unknown. Where pink flamingos grow. Diet soda flows and what you take magically regenerates. On supermarket shelves, the ovens clean themselves. Hi there, beautiful. I am here to tell you that I recently cut my thumb, as you can see here. And if I lose all capability of grabbing things with my left hand, I will be ending stream. If you know what I mean. Over the Hedge, DreamWorks 12th animation, released in 2006. And I gotta say, this movie, it's pretty fun. I know movies like Shrek, Madagascar, what is that other movie? How to Train Your Dragon. I don't know how I forgot that. I know those are movies that made DreamWorks very popular, but to me, the main movie I think of when I see DreamWorks, I don't know why it's Over the Hedge. I was kind of obsessed with this movie at the time, and I gotta say, after rewatching it after 14 years or so, this movie still very much keeps up. Now the animation, no, 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 the animation doesn't keep up. That, that, that shit. But, but, but you know the story, the movie, how fun it is. I think it's absolutely a treat and still can be enjoyed to this day. If you don't know what Over the Hedge is, it's basically a comedy and a heist movie wrapped in the one with animals. Before I explain any more of what the movie actually is, you know I gotta dig into that animation, baby. I will say for the time when 3D animation was first getting its first legs, the early 2000s. It's 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 decent to say the least. I think it was like there are some like there's very good animation in general. It's just that like the style of it, it's so it's it's kind of bad. These characters look very very bad, especially the human characters. I'm always gonna talk about the human characters in 3D animation. It's so bad, dude. I will say that scenes mainly with Hammy, the animation there is pretty good i actually enjoy a lot of the animation with hammy it's just that like overall in general i wasn't really like caring too much about the animation which was kind of fine the focus wasn't really the animation i feel it was mainly the story and the story was very good now with the background and environments they kind of do this thing that a lot of early 2000 movies kind of did where they added a lot of blur a lot of motion blur and a lot of shots and it very much stands out but the main difference is between this and like i don't know a movie like alpha and omega to where like they're not confident in their backgrounds at all there's actually a lot of life and a lot of like very good detail in these backgrounds. He was wazoo food there. No, you're not. The tail is tingling. Oh, oh, well, well, hold on, hold on. The what is what? When something doesn't feel right, my tail tingles. And let me tell you something. Everything you've said so far is driving my tail crazy. And a lot of these shots, they blur the background in order to have the main characters talk, have that be the focus. But the difference between this and other movies of this generation of this time is that they actually are confident in their backgrounds, as you can see with this scene. If I put it on the screen, if I don't, I'm a fucking stupid ass idiot. They use the blur to sort of make a focus on the character but the character models aren't really good so it's kind of like yeah, I don't know but at the very least they are not shy to show these backgrounds in their full detail and I gotta say this is very good because they're the detail in these backgrounds at the time very amazing and it still looks kind of good now for my favorite part the music the music and over the hedge they got I believe two people two main people to make like songs for this movie and almost all of them kind of bang. These songs are so good that I'm pretty sure they're copyrighted still to this day. So I can't really show them, but you know, I can I can sing a little bit, you know, just 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 a little bit. Dude, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there is like more than like three or four people. Probably like a lot of people who hate the fuck when I sing, but I don't give a fuck. Go die! <laughs> Rocking the suburbs. Around the block just one more time We're rocking the suburbs Cause I can't tell which house is mine We're rocking the suburbs I don't know what the fuck else <laughs> Also beforehand, I figured out Rocking the Suburbs was actually a song on its own It's just that DreamWorks kind of contacted him and said Hey, what if you make this song but I don't know, completely different? And he was like, yeah, let's do it But I gotta say, that song 
It's like a triangle in a square hole. It fits so perfectly for no reason at all. All of this music is just absolutely amazing to hear. It fits perfectly with this movie. And even the score. The score is just beautifully. Everything, the music is just not an issue here. It's... It's perfect. Now, let's summarize this story. This story is about a raccoon named RJ. He is a lone wolf, and he is scourging for food. Scourging, scourging. He is a person who fends for himself and looks for his own food. And it just so happens he's running out of food, and so what does he decide to do? He decides to hit up his buddy, well, buddy, quote unquote, a bear who is hibernating for the winter question mark or hibernating in general i guess and uh steal tries to steal all of his food he goes into the bear's cave and tries to steal some food and he almost got away with it uh, stealing all of the food actually if he wasn't so fucking greedy we get to see a core characteristic from this raccoon greediness because you know raccoons are kind of greedy haha <laughs> you get it but yeah we get to see how rj is greedy and in fact when he could have got away with everything he decides to try and get some spuddies which is like a can of pringles basically from the bear and it wakes him up when he tries to pop a can open <laughs> the quietest noise waking you up yeah me too dude the bear wakes up and is like rj you are stupid as fuck for trying to steal from me and rj's like yeah i know and RJ accidentally pushes all the food which he gathered into this little red wagon into the street and it gets ran over. Now the bear is very pissed off and obviously wants to kill RJ, but RJ makes an ultimatum. He says, I can get everything back within a week. And, you know, the bear's just like, well, you know, no stress on me. That's absolutely fine. I'll let you do that. And if you try to run away, then I'm going to kill your ass. Don't even think about running away, because if you do, I will hunt you down and kill you. I gotta say, as a kid, I really thought this was stupid that RJ just still didn't run away anyway. Like, he couldn't find him if he went far away. But then I realized as I grew older, like, there's a sort of, like, manipulation sort of tactic to where, like, if you are super scared of someone, you feel like you can't run away no matter what and it's like you're entrapped into something and or also he just like he lives there and he doesn't want to leave that's a possibility so now rj has to get all of this food back within a week and he needs some help in order to do so and he ends up meeting these foragers who were hibernating over the winter but now i guess the winter is over uh, i'm not too sure why the bear is still hibernating then so yeah rj ends up meeting these foragers who he tries to get close with and in order to help gather all of his food for the bear but he doesn't tell him that you know all this food that we're gathering is for a bear and he convinces these foragers in order to join their party by basically showing them a chip which you know chip is kind of good he opens up that bag it's like a fucking explosion i'm gonna show the clip in a minute but remember when prices made sense like they actually made sense I don't remember that anymore! JK, I didn't record no clip. You guys gonna have to suffer. And now these foragers want to know what they've been missing. They're in this small section of this, like, huge-ass suburb area. And so they go on the outskirts of, like, you know, into the human area of the suburbs. And they start, like, st stealing from trash bins, just stealing from people in general, causing a muck within the neighborhood. That is the altar where they worship food. That's what they eat when they've eaten too much food. That gets rid of the guilt so they can eat more food. I mean, is he wrong though? And people are obviously noticing these animals are tearing into their trash bins and everything like that. But one character that's really noticing is our main antagonist, which forgot their name. I'm just going to call him PETA. <laughs> PETA's actually kind of a perfect name for her. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> PETA hates the fuck out of animals and calls an exterminator in order to humanely get rid of them which basically means you know kill them and i gotta say the exterminator would have been a lot more threatening if they were a little bit more serious they they lean on the more comedic side which honestly is kind of fine it's just that like uh, nothing's gonna happen to these animals when they do end up getting caught where is that ridiculous exterminator now 
Buenos dias, reptile. Or should I say, Buenos noches. I played this game as a kid and I just, I needed to insert this clip in here. It's a core memory, bro. Anyway, Vern, the turtle, the leader of the foragers, a little pack they have, um, sees this exterminator and he's like, well, I don't want us to end up like that. So I'm going to return all of this food. And so Vern's trying to be a homie and look out for his pack. And so he's trying to return his food so that they, they don't get angered anymore. They're like, well, you're on equal terms. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, RJ is just like, nah, we can't be doing that. And so shenanigans ensue. They end up losing the food. And then now Vern feels bad because like, he, he's just like, well, now I feel like a piece of shit because we have no food and now everybody hates me because we have no food. So let's do whatever you need to do, RJ, in order to get all this food back. And so they set up a heist for um, the last night, the last night for uh, RJ to gather food in order before the bear actually like comes and kills him. Now, I ain't trying to say nothing. The fuck you waiting for? You thought I was going to say something? No, I said I ain't trying to say nothing. That I said what I said. <laughs> and so they do the heist. It takes until morning, and they end up pulling off the heist. It's just that RJ needed spuddies, which are like Pringles, like I said before. And he said, we're not leaving without spuddies. And so he ends up getting everybody else except him caught for it. RJ ends up getting all of his crew caught except for him. And then he ends up taking all the food, which, you know, the crew members gathered back to the bear. RJ returns all the food back to the bear. And then he starts to realize, wow, I really had a good thing going with them. They were almost like a family. Well, they kind of were a family to him. And they were so respectful, so kind, so caring to him and he just double crosses him like that and he's like nah jk bear i'm just going to launch myself into this uh exterminator car and just fight this bitch <laughs> a climactic end with rj and his crew versus the bear and um the antagonist and the exterminator happen and you know that's the end of the movie rj jo joins that family and becomes one of them and you know that's the end of the movie i gotta say this movie is extremely enjoyable and i can definitely see why there's almost no filler in this movie almost every single part of the movie has a reason to be there and it ties into the main story this is how you actually write a good story almost every single moment of this movie really tied into each other or at least the main plot and if it didn't it's set up into the main plot which i very much appreciate it's what's it's what makes this movie so enjoyable and easy easy to watch even though the animation didn't really age too well i gotta say i still enjoy this movie to this day this is one of dreamworks hidden gems they were kind of on the roll with their movies and this is absolutely no exception i am personally going to give this movie a solid six I believe a six is appropriate as an enjoyable soundtrack an enjoyable cast and a very good story which i very much like uh definitely a six for me but that's all i have to say anyway how's it going pups it's a canine i can't use my left hand so i'm i've never really had anything like that i know but believe me this this is the gateway to the good life really wish you would have told me that sooner yeah well that's bad communication also something families do if i gotta be completely honest I kind of miss the days when, you know, you could just go outside and talk to somebody, you know, you have that family, have that connection almost like with people you may not even know. Now, everybody's so like independent, like which I thought was a good thing. But like as I go into my late, like late 20s into 30s soon enough, I got to say I I miss families and connection. I want to talk to people. I want to have a good time and not like judge people based on mistakes they've made in the past. I don't know. This is lame. I know it's lame to say, but I miss having life.